And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today, we're going to be reviewing the Bergara BMP, or the Bergara Match Precision. So choosing your next precision rifle for PRS is tough. There's tons of factory options out there at pretty much this price point, but which ones should you choose? Well, I'm going to be helping you, I'm going to be helping you guys decide on the Bergara BMP today. This one specifically is chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, this is a very full, very comprehensive review. We put a lot of money and a lot of time into this review. I hope you guys enjoy it. So let's start off with the price. We're talking about $1,800 Canadian or around $1,300 US. Let's start off with the accuracy. So for one thing, this rifle has been particularly accurate. Very, very accurate. We tried a variety of different match ammunition. So pretty much from now on in our reviews, you can expect that we are going to be using match ammunition as opposed to just using reloads. So let's start with the Nosler ballistic tip. This group here is probably about an inch and a half. Now, for one thing, a lot of people typically just say is, oh, well, maybe you just need more practice. That's good ammunition when really that means nothing. You need to try a variety of different ammunition to see what your rifle likes. Most shooters on a bench rest are capable of around half MOA if you do your part on a sandbag. So if you have proper instruction or if someone can show you, you should be able to attain that and be able to tell what your rifle likes. So Nisler, it didn't really like. Hornady Match, 147 grain ELD. It freaking loved. Now this is a really nice group. Next, the Barnes oh, no, Precision no. Match. Pretty awful. <laughs> Around probably about an inch and a half again. The Hornady Match 120 grain. This is about half MOA. So right away there we know with match ammunition, the Bergara BMP is very, very Ooh, capable. And lastly, we did try the Hornady Precision Hunter with the 143 grain ELD axis. And it was around just over one MOA. So it's not bad, but it's just not amazing. So I think we did the best with our 120 grain ELDMs. Yeah, so half MOA. That's with factory ammunition, but I don't like using factory ammunition because it's so darn expensive. When I reload, it costs me about a dollar a round. Whereas when I buy match ammunition, I bought six boxes of 20 of match ammunition, different brands, and my bill was around $400 Canadian. So it was expensive to say the least. So let's take a look at my reloads. Let's start with the slowest velocity. So this, this is our first group at 39 grains of powder of 6.5 Stable. Uh, also, just to note, is we were using 147 grain ELDMs and we were using Hornady Brass and uh, CCI BR2 primers. Next, 39.3, again, really accurate. 39.6, pretty good, not really what I'd say is competition accurate. 39.9, decent, 40.2, not great, and well, what you see as 40.5 is kind of a mix of 40.5 and I think 40.8, but it, it wasn't amazing. Next, 40.1, that's about one inch group. 41.4, fairly consistent, but with that one on the top, not amazing. 40.7, decent, and keep in mind, these are four shot groups. 42, this was actually pretty damn good. 40.2, was a really good group that we scored here. So in the end, I settled with what we had the lowest standard deviation. Uh, and I, I think I went with 41.7, which surprisingly is actually what my Bergara HMR likes. So what are the odds? And also it's what my um, Tika UPR likes and my own custom rifle. So I, I pretty much only noticed this after I done all these reviews and I was doing this one and I'm like, hey, I think this is, cause I have it on my board and I write down what each rifle likes. And, 41.7 seems to be a particular favorite for many of my rifles. So yeah, just food for thought. Uh, and lastly, the 42.9 and 43.2, not that great. So clearly that's why we went with the 41.7 grains. So for accuracy, this rifle is excellent. It's heavy enough that obviously with a quality scope, with, which is actually what we were using in this video, we were using an IOR Raider, a three to 24 by 56. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is, man, this thing is a beast because it is, it absolutely is a beast. It is a high performance machine. So we have a 40 millimeter tube, which might surprise you. Uh, it houses 40 mils of internal adjustment. It has a zero stop and a secondary kind of reference mark for the turret, which is something I found very interesting, which I don't see on almost any other optics. 
One thing other than the specs that I've listed before, which will probably blow you away, is its field of view. So six feet at the 25 magnification and 38 feet at the three. Now I haven't seen any optics in any optic in the industry that has this wide of a field of view. I think this one probably has the widest field of view on the market today. So if you're looking for a fantastic quality optic, this is absolutely going to be a buy it once, cry once type of optic. Back to the review. So this is what we did at 720 meters. Hit. Bottom. Yep. Oh, dead on. Yeah, hit. But nice. we use 720 meters kind of all the time. And I figured, well, let's try 1,495 yards or 1,300 and I think it's 45 meters. And this is the farthest I've ever shot in my life. Oh. Did we just hit right under? Right, right under, I think. Oh yeah. man, I was aiming the top right corner. Underneath again. Yeah. Oh, oh come on, still. <laughs> still underneath. Nothing? Nothing. So I hit it. Uh, it was not easy. I shot, I did miss, obviously, a few times. It was not, definitely not that easy. And one funny story is. I'll make it short. I put all my ballistics data in the Hornady app and it said 15 mils and I'm like, okay. Took a few shots at 15 mils, nothing even close. I didn't even see this, the, the misses and it wasn't windy at all. And then uh, I, I, I basically adjusted until I could see my misses and then I, was, then, I, then I hit the target. I came home and I was complaining about it on to, to some of my friends in, the, in our Discord app of me and Slav Guns and a bunch of other YouTubers. And then I thought, what if I put in the wrong unit of measurement for the distance? So I looked in my Hornady app and yeah, I, I wrote down 1,345 yards as opposed to, well, 1,345 meters. So it gave me 15 mils while when I changed the unit of measurement, it literally told me 19.2 mils up, which is exactly what I had to use in the IOR Raider. And which actually goes to tell you that the tracking on this thing is spot on. It's 100% spot on. So yeah, it, it really worked. Re this system together worked really, really well. And the glass in this made it so I could spot my misses really easily on that day. Then again, it was overcast. So we had some of the best conditions the weather could afford us. So. Accuracy is fantastic. So next, let's talk about the barreled action. There's a lot to say about the Bergara B14 action. So we've reviewed the Bergara HMR, and this is very similar in that regard. It's got the same action. It's got that butter smooth 90 degree bolt throw with a large bolt knob. So this setup pretty much here is a no upgrades necessary type of setup on the action itself. It's super smooth, and the bolt lift is also really nice and smooth too. I have HMR and this one which have the same action and they're really really nice and you won't be disappointed. The only thing that they don't come with is the rail. Barrel action is 4140 chromoly steel which is actually the same material used on the barrel 4140 chromoly steel and uh, from what my gunsmith told me it's not ideal to use the same material on the barrel as you would use in the action just because if the barrel does fail well, because the action is the same material, then it would have the same, it could potentially fail as well. So keep in mind, I'm no gunsmith. Then again, Bergara B14 HMRs have been used widespread on the market and they work really, really well and they have a very good reputation. So next, let's talk about the barrel. So this is a 24 inch threaded barrel with an one and eight inch twist and it's uh, 4140 chromoly steel. Very accurate, very good quality barrels. And this is made in Spain. Next, let's talk about the trigger. So if you've seen my review on the Bergara HMR, I wasn't a fan of the B14 trigger. So this trigger is actually the same trigger. So they, they, this is the same trigger that's in both. But this one was actually better. So I think on the HMR trigger, I was having about a half pound variation. So I could be breaking at 2.5 pounds, I could be breaking at 
three pounds without even adjusting the screw on the trigger. Now, from what I've been told when I've done some factory tours at uh, some precision rifle uh, companies, is they've told me largely that's not always due to the trigger's fault. It could also be due to the spring in the bolt. So maybe that's the issue. Heck, I don't know. This trigger actually was pretty good. So at the lowest breaking weight, it broke at 2.5 pounds. At the highest breaking weight, it broke at four pounds. And the plus or minus, the variance between breaking weights was about 0 0.2. So that's actually really good. So at this price, they did a really good job for that. Although there is a little bit of creep in this trigger. Next, let's talk aftermarket support. Well, um, the B14 HMR is a Remington 700 footprint. That's true to the Remington 700 footprint, which is something I've noticed when it comes to buying an aftermarket chassis. Depending on which chassis you wanna go with, it doesn't accept all Remington 700 clones. Whereas this one should fit into like all of them that claim to be Remington 700 clones. The one probably big difference from a Remington 700 to this, let's say just in, in terms of parts, the barrel is actually not a Remington barrel. It's not a exact Remington 700. It has a slightly different internals here. So you can just go ahead and buy a Remington 700 barrel and chuck it on a uh, worn out B14 HMR action. But there are plenty of barrels that will fit this. So any gunsmith will be able to spin you a barrel for the B14 HMR. Uh, also triggers, actually on our B14 HMR review, we actually upgraded our trigger to the Trigger Tech Diamond. So something that goes down as low as four ounces, which is ridiculously light to about as heavy as 32 ounces. So if you want to upgrade, let's say this rifle or even the Bergara HMR, the Trigger Tech Diamond is one of my favorites. Additionally, you can put a muzzle brake on this one because it has a threaded barrel. So if you're looking for a decent quality muzzle brake, there's good ones out there. Some of our favorites are the Core Brake V3 by Cortax Solutions and the MX1 muzzle brakes by KDEX. So if you're looking for good quality muzzle brakes, check out either of those two companies. They work really, really well. Next, let's talk about the stock. So this, I feel in many regards, they did a great job. And in other regards, they kind of dropped the ball. So if we start at our butt here, we have tons of adjustment. We have this, this adjustment here. We can go up and down and even remove if we need to remove the bolt. Uh, I'll just leave it removed in this instance. We can actually go up and down with our, our, our butt pad here, which is typically something you see on more expensive precision rifles. So I think that's a pretty awesome thing. And not only that, but take a look at this. It can kind of go either way. So you can get it really perfect to fit into your shoulder. So that's something that pretty much nobody else is doing at this price. Also, if you want to adjust the length of pull, you would loosen this one here and you would do it that way. So that's how you would adjust your length of pull. Now let's work our way to the front. Um, right here, I think, is a one area where I felt like they could have done better. A lot of shooters, a lot of PRS shooters, a lot of competitive shooters like having a thumb shelf on this side of the rifle. But as you can see, it actually drops down to where the pistol grip is. Personally, in my opinion, I don't really like this design. I felt like they should have made it flush and they could have put a thumb shelf on this side and it would have been more comfortable. Also, it does take AR-15 type pistol grips. The one that does come with it is okay. It's not terrible, but it's something I'd probably upgrade if I was gonna keep this rifle in the long run. Next, if we work our way to the front, this rifle does take AICS magazines, which is a big deal for those who are competing. AICS magazines are very important because they are considered the gold standard for competitive shooters. Uh, the Bergara magazine in this thing works flawlessly. It works really, 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 really well, and it clips in so perfectly. Oof. Now, the AICS steel magazines, for some reason, which are ones I buy from MDT, which work great in pretty much all of my other rifles that take AICS magazines, we had some issues. I'm not sure why. And I mean, my bullets were loaded the same length they always are for all my other precision rifles at 2.82 um, COAL. And we had some jams. So that was only when I was doing my kind of PRS type scene stuff that we actually had those issues. Because when I was doing bench rest, I was always using the Bergara magazine, which worked flawlessly. So just keep that in mind. It doesn't work perfectly with the Bergara magazines. Also, another thing that I forgot to mention when we we're talking about the barreled action is we got some failures to eject. I was quite surprised. We have seem to have a weak ejector system in this. 
or maybe it's because I'm cycling the action forward too quickly that w the minute it starts to eject, I'm pushing it kind of back in. I'm not exactly sure. Anyway, that's typically not something that should occur. All right, let's move to the front. So we have M locks kind of all over the place. We have some at our six o'clock, nine o'clock, and three o'clock. Uh, one thing I would have really liked to see on this is an arc rail. I'm not sure it costs all that much more in terms of manufacturing, but then again, I think when they came out with the Bergara BMP, it wasn't probably the biggest consideration that they had. We do have sling swivel studs here, and we have QD slots right here on the opposite side, and actually one on the butt. I didn't even notice that earlier. So you do have quite a few things that are nice to have on a precision rifle. This is a very nice rifle, but overall it's still not quite perfect. Now in terms of the warranty, how good is the warranty for Bergara? Well, from what I hear, their customer service is excellent, but they only warranty it for the first owner, which, I mean, it's kind of disappointing, but it's kind of is what it is for, I guess, a lot of the industry. Um, and they don't allow that you modify the rifle. So I'm guessing if you recrown it yourself or maybe even have a gunsmith do that, they might no longer warranty it. Um, I'm not exactly sure what else they consider mods. Maybe truing the action would probably uh, avoid your warranty. They don't want hand loads either. From the reading I've done, they won't warranty it or you've kind of avoided your warranty if you use hand loads in your rifle. In my opinion, that's something that, that probably shouldn't be done. People doing hand loads are typically people who compete, who are serious competitors, and they know their stuff. So saying that kind of, I, I, in a way, it almost sours it. But then again, we have to consider this. People who compete burn barrels. So it won't really matter to them because maybe in about 4,000 rounds or 5,000 rounds or 6,000 rounds, they're chucking this barrel off anyway. So it won't really matter all that much. And Bolt actions are pretty bulletproof in terms of the, the large components of them, the more expensive components of them. So you are mostly covered in that aspect. So that's my review on the Bergara BMP Precision, chambered in 6.5 Creedmoor. So if you guys enjoyed this review, we are doing lots of comparison reviews for other uh, precision rifles around this price point, even more expensive ones, more budget ones. If you guys enjoyed this video, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe. I really appreciate it. And thanks for watching Affordable Optics right. and Rifle Reviews. Cool.